Hello. Today we've got a book. We're going to read for Ira. Our book today is called Inside Asperger's Looking Out. Okay, let's get a few things settled right from the start. People with Asperger's are not broken or damaged or somehow less than normal people. We do not need to be fixed and we don't suffer from Asperger's as if it's a disease. Sure, we may think and act and learn differently from others, but differently can be a good thing. Even those with Asperger's can be very different from each other. We can be shy or outgoing, depressed or happy, be alone or have friends, struggle or excel, be fussy or eat anything. There are, however, a few things that we do not have in common. Consider our senses that we do have in common. They can be hyper alert. Got that? Hyper. It's as though our senses input button is turned right up. Some foods which others think are yummy and healthy can taste yucky to us. We are not trying to be difficult. We like to eat what others eat, but sometimes it feels slimy or bad or just plain wrong. If we say that a sound annoys us, we really mean it. Even the scratching of a pencil on paper or the buzz of a light can drill into our ears until we do anything to shut the noise out. But sound that we control or make ourselves does not bother us at all. Go figure, huh? Our sense of smell can be so strong that during everyday activities such as art class, we can't focus because of the fumes. Bright and flickering lights can make us feel sick and give us headaches. And even colors can affect us and swirl around and hurt our eyes. As far as touch, why, oh why, are we made to wear things that strangle and scratch? It doesn't seem fair that we have to be uncomfortable all day just to make others happy. When we go out, we hear noises and we smell things and lights flash in our heads. And our brains go nuts. When it all becomes too much, we may rock or flap or jump to make us feel like we are in control. Some people don't like it when we do that and they may tell us to Stop that behavior at your age. But you try dealing with ordinary things that scratch and smell and taste bad and hurt your eyes and ears and see what you would do. Sometimes when things get so bad and we can't explain how we feel and we have no idea how to control our situation, we may yell and scream and throw our bodies around. This is called a meltdown. Meltdowns are not fun and we can't control them. We never choose to have one and hate it when they happen to us. Often we get punished for having one, which is so unfair. Believe us, the meltdowns are punishment enough. Another thing we have trouble with is understanding social rules. Tell me I look nice. Sit still. Don't interrupt. Play sport. Wear what I wear. Even when we try to fit in in the crowd, we tend to make a mess of things. For a start, we don't know the difference between smiling and someone wanting to hurt us. When we meet new people, we cannot tell by how they look or how they talk if they're friendly or dangerous. We are being relaxed. We, we try being relaxed and happy when we can't tell anger from a yawn. It's like this. You don't understand body language. You can't pick up people's feelings by their tone of voice. We understand the basic meaning of words. So when other people see, hear, and react to us, come here and say that. Come here and say that. We hear and react to this. Which can get us into all sorts of trouble, and usually we have no idea why.
When most people enter a public place, the crowds and business do not bother them. But for us, they are confusing places full of threat. Every sense is an alert all the time looking for danger. Not really being sure if we should be afraid or, or not. Do you have any idea how much effort that takes? It makes us want to curl up in a ball and be left alone. However, we don't want to be alone all the time. We want friends. We really do. But we don't know how to get them. Which is a shame because we know we are loyal and interesting and fun to be with. If only we are given a chance. We've got a clever and quirky sense of humor. Our skills are really worthwhile, like the abilities to concentrate on things that interest us. And to come up with new ideas. We try to make friends by being helpful and letting people know how to do things the right way. Red toys must always go together. And we try to explain how wonderful it is to do the same things in the same way every day. For some reason, others do not always agree with us. We always tell the truth that doesn't seem to make us popular either. What do you mean I have buzzard breath? We, we're playing Chasey. She must like me. So we use logic, which often fails us too. We try to make people, we try to make friends by sharing exciting facts about things that interest us. The banana tree is really a giant herb. And we tell others as soon as we see them because they do not know how long, we do not know how long they will stay and we do not want them to miss out. But often they get bored or walk away or tell us to stop going on and on and on about the same thing. Even worse, they may demand that we look them in the eyes when we are talking. For an Aspie, that feels like being invaded. <clears throat> Besides, we usually listen better without needing to work out all those facial squints and twitches mean. Yet after all the efforts to be helpful and friendly, we are often excluded or bullied. Some people may pretend to be our friends, while really they are not. All that makes us sad, and although we seem calm on the outside, inside we are a ball of scream. The frustrating thing is if people would simply ask themselves, I wonder why you acted that way. Rather than presuming we are bad or stupid, our lives would be so much easier because we always have a logical reason for what we do even if you don't know how to say it even if we don't know how to say it in words how did I get here wire balance slip gravity stretch ouch I don't know and people who think we don't have emotions are wrong of course we have them but we aren't always sure which emotion we need to show Although our faces may not know the, mo the moves, our hearts do. Eventually we learn how to act in an acceptable way. Often we are good at it, but that does not mean our Asperger's has disappeared. It makes us actors who are sometimes sad and confused on the inside. After saying all that, we are proud of who we are and wouldn't change ourselves even if we could. Because what we feel, want, believe, and hope for isn't any different from anyone else. We are simply individuals who need our weaknesses supported, our strengths recognized, and our abilities encouraged. So if people without Asperger's can learn to accept and value each other, imagine what can be achieved. That's it.